And the gravel that washes away on the roadways can't just be reused because now it's full of extra debris that can be on the roadways. It was in this locker just three days ago, police found bomb making materials. To check how full your tank is, he says to check under this hood here and look at this gauge. To be full is considered 80 or 85, so the closer to that number, the better. Today I spoke with a local law enforcer who's in charge of keeping these dash cams up to date. He says like in most departments, they have video running 24 seven in each of these marked squad cars. Getting in your car every day, you assume that you and your family are traveling safely. That is, until you get a recall notice like this one in the mail, noting a pretty serious safety concern. It's a good time of year to make sure your emergency preparedness kit is stocked and ready. I need a few items today, so I'm going to go ahead and grab those. While it seems to be common sense, most folks admit they are not prepared. Do you guys have an emergency preparedness kit in your home? No. No. No, I live by myself. Would you say that you're ready for emergencies if something were to strike? Probably not. Law enforcement fire can not get to everybody at once if there's more than one issue at the same time. So we have to learn to take care of ourselves. Whether the emergency is a fire, snowstorm, power outage, or chemical disaster, it's too late to prepare when it strikes. All it takes is one shopping trip. It's always important to have a flashlight, extra batteries, and of course, you want plenty of warm blankets available in case of a power outage. Water is another very important item, and not only for drinking. We should have gallons of water in the basement or someplace stored that we could flush the toilet with. Nuts and protein bars are also good items to add to your kit. They provide you with filling protein in case you don't have ready access to food. And don't forget about medications. If we got snowed in for several days and the pill bottle ran empty, we need to have a supply within reason for medications. Finally, think of your family's special needs, whether that's catering to a baby or a pet, be ready. We just don't think that we need it because it's never going to happen here. Now it looks like we have just about everything for any emergency that could come our way. In Mason City, Katie Hinker, KIMT News 3. My son, he yelled at me, Dad, the doors on the shed are swinging out. So we run out to try to get the doors put back in place. And we got them sp spread apart and opened up. I said, let's just open them up. We turn around and there it was, just like you see on TV. Monday night, Steve Wendell got as close to a tornado as he probably ever wants to be. The big dark funnel thing and stuff was flying around in the dirt. And How close man, are you to that? Well, it actually hit that shed right there, and we were in this shed right over here and, you know, a few hundred feet away. Now he is just happy no one was hurt. Do you yeah. feel kind of lucky? Yeah, lucky, yeah. <laughs> Here's a look at the damage the Wendell's experienced just north of Mason City, but he's not the only one on the street with flattened buildings. Well, I've got two probably 30 by 50 barns, a machine shed, a 30 by 100 former uh, chicken house, all aluminum. Uh, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Around 6 o'clock Monday night is when it started getting ugly. These are just a few pictures from our viewers. Here's some baseball-sized hail. Trees uprooted all over the area and power lines on the ground. The next thing you know, there's fireballs from electric lines all hitting the ground and stuff. The rain came and the winds came and I couldn't really see out and back, but uh, it abated for a minute and then I couldn't believe the destruction. Unbelievable. And Wendell isn't only worried about his buildings, but his livestock as well. My big cattle sheds down south, it's completely gone, and I had two bulls in the lot, and oh, no. we kind of got them penned up, but I had three cows in the lot down here, and they're gone. So what's next? Call the insurance man. And then the cleanup begins. It's like, well, we, we can't do anything till the insurance adjusters look at it, and then it's just going to be a big mess. Katie Hinker, KIMT News 3. It was really difficult when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's because I just felt my life was coming to an end and I couldn't do anything that I had been doing. After riding in four rag rides and climbing mountains as high as Kilimanjaro, Parkinson's patient Nan Little has been proven wrong. But she may not be doing all these things if it weren't for her bike and a man named Jay Alberts. I thought, well, how else can we encourage individuals in rural America 
to who have Parkinson's to really understand that this is not a death sentence. And I thought, well, RAGBRAI might be that mechanism. After seeing Albert speak on national TV about the benefits of exercise for Parkinson's patients, Nan gave him a call. And he said, well, why don't you and your husband ride across Iowa with us? And I said, well, sure, I'd be happy to do that. Well, then I hung up the phone and I thought, Iowa, 450 miles. Oh my gosh, how am I going to do that? I, I can barely ride a bike. At that time, she wasn't in the best shape. Before I started the biking, my head, my, my range of motion was about 90 degrees, so I could go about so and so. My hand was clenched at my side. It was sort of crooked and bent into this claw shape. I had a, a big tremor. She didn't let that stop her, though, and began training four to six days a week at a fast pace. A month later, she wasn't prepared for the dramatic changes. I was walking my dogs, and I looked down, and my arm was swinging freely at my side. My hand was open. I stopped. I realized I was not shuffling. I turned my head to the left and to the right as far as I could go and I started to cry. I just stood there on the sidewalk bawling. She says it was a miracle that through cycling she got her body back. Alberts, however, was not a surprise. He currently has a clinical trial underway to see if intense cycling and exercising can act as medicine. And actually the results are very promising to show that the patterns of brain activity that are achieved or occur with medication are very similar to the patterns that occur after exercise. So in this case, it really does look like exercise is medicine. His inspiration began during RAGBRAI, so they keep coming back, and they are able to share their message with the thousands of riders. They can make a difference in their own lives or their parents or their family's lives. So being able to share that message is huge, and you can do that on RAGBRAI day after day after day. In Mason City, Katie Hinker, KIMT News 3. I Pantinian, Marshall Island, Macon Island Raid. Those are just three of the five missions Marine Corps vet John Seaburn served in. He didn't mention Okinawa and Iwo Jima. There's what it looked like when I first what in the Marine Corps? While in Iwo Jima, Seaburn was part of something pretty special. We've all seen this picture. It was taken on February 23rd, 1945. The men in this photo are revered for their efforts, but there were other servicemen, like Seaburn, behind it. And that's me taking down the flag as they put up the new one. It's this image that is close to his heart. It surfaced not long ago after the Marine photographer passed. His wife was going through the, their uh, lockbox and found this fourth picture. What you don't see in this picture is the danger still very present around them. You see, Seaburn was charged with standing guard as the men raised the new flag. Because we still be fired upon when they raised it. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they were lousy shots. According to a fellow veteran, we're, we're real good friends. Even though his service came to an end, Seaburn continues to guard those around him. John always looked after everyone. I mean, he, he always felt that he ser was a service to all people. So, As for what Veterans Day means to Seaburn. No, you don't even remember what you even thinking at the time. After what he's seen, not much gets him too excited. Well, I suppose there's some pride, but uh, when you get to be 89 years old, it takes a lot to entice you.